today's video, we're going to deploy a Python Flask application with Entra ID authentication to Azure App Services. So let's get straight into it. So over here, I have my Python Flask application. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to make a request to a specific endpoint variable. That endpoint variable is actually going to be the me point on the Microsoft Graph API. So it's going to get information about the currently logged on user and just display that. Let's see what that looks like in test. So on my terminal, I just need to run this command to test this application locally to see if it's working. I can now go to localhost on port 3000 and we can see that I can log on. This is actually having trouble signing me on because I have not registered this application correctly within Azure yet. So let's go do that so we can test this properly. So over here in Entra ID, I need to first perform an application registration. So I'm going to go to app registrations on the left hand side here. I'm going to click new registration. I'm going to call this Python Flask app. This is going to be for a single tenanted application and the redirect URI, this is going to be testing locally. So I'm going to want to gra grab this local host over here for this local test. And this is going to be a web application. I'm now going to register that application and it is going to create me this Python Flask application registration. I now need to go and grab this client ID over here. I need to put this into my environment variables as this is the client ID of the application registration. I now also need the client secret. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go into certificates and secrets and I'm going to create a new client secret called secret. This is going to expire in 180 days and I'm going to look at the value of that secret and copy it. I'm going to put the value of that secret directly over here into the code itself and I'm going to save that so those environment variables are correct. What I also need is I need this permission here, user.read for the application itself. So let's set that permission inside the Azure portal. Back over here on the Python Flask app application registration, I'm going to go to API permissions. We can see that user.read is available to us and I'm going to grant admin consent for the entire tenant. So everybody who logs into this application will automatically be consented for user.read to the Graph API. Let's go test this locally. So I'm going to now retry that test. Let's go to localhost on port 3000 and we'll log in with my Mike admin account. Once that is authenticated, we can see the Python web application is running or the Flask web application is running and it says welcome Mike admin. If we go to call an API, this is going to use user.read to call the profiles about the Mike admin user. So we can see down here the preferred language is ENGB because color has a U in it and it's aluminium, not aluminum. You can see the name is Mike Admin, the given name is Mike, and this has pulled all this information directly from the Graph API uh, and the currently logged on user. So that's working locally. Let's deploy that to Azure. Okay, so now I need to test this online by deploying an app service. I can do that very easily here from within VS Code if I have the app Azure application extensions installed. So now if I go into app services and I go to create a new web app down here, I need to enter a globally unique name for this. We're going to call this Python test app mic. And we're going to create a new resource group called Python test app mic. That's fine. And we're going to select the runtime stack of Python 3.11, which is the version of Python that this environment is using. We will deploy this to UK South and we will create a new app service plan called Python test app mic. We will deploy this onto an S1 standard tier here rather than the basic tiers because the basic tiers are actually quite slow. So this is just a demo. This will work perfectly fine for now. We don't want to actually use application insights. We can skip that. And now our application is actually deploying into Azure, as you can see within the terminal down the bottom here. Let's wait for that to deploy. OK, so our application is now completed deploying. We can see this because our status has started. This may take a few minutes, so be patient. Let's just check the default domain on here and see what's deployed. We can see that your web app is running and waiting for content. Cool. So now what we can do is we can actually deploy our application to our web app. So let's begin that process. Back over here in VS Code, all I have to do is go to App Services, find my new app service that's been deployed, right click on this, 
and then deploy to web app. And now we can see that is now deploying at the moment to the Python test app my web app on the web. Let's wait for that to deploy. That appears to have deployed within VS Code. If I go to my app service online and open up that domain again, you will see that it has not actually deployed as of yet. If we go to the log stream, we will be able to see the current logs that are happening on this web service. There will be a lot of information flowing past here and we will need to wait until this log service is complete or we will need to wait until this deployment is complete before we will actually see this Flask web app represented online. This could take a few minutes for the app service to actually build the Python Flask web app. So let's wait for that to deploy. Now that deployment is complete, let's go and check what that looks like online. So if I go back to the overview and go back to my test app, I get an authentication error. This is because the environment variables have not been actually uploaded to the application. If we look over here on the environment variables, we will notice they are not the same environment variables as the environment variables we have down here for our localized version of this application. So let's go and put these environment variables into the app service. There is a very easy way to do that. We just have to come to the app service here, go to the application settings, right click and upload the local settings. It will automatically detect the environment variable file. I can click on this and it will start to upload those items. So these client IDs, client secrets, endpoints, redirect URIs, they have all been added up here. The only difference we need to go and change here is the redirect URI because we don't want it going to the local host anymore. We want it actually going to that app service. So what I'm going to need to do is just refresh this and change this in a couple of locations. So let's go and take the default domain over here, copy that to a clipboard, and we'll go back into environment variables. We will go back into redirect URI. Let's go and change this redirect URI by editing this. And we will change this redirect URI to this location, which is HTTPS colon slash slash python test at mic.azurewebsites.net forward slash get a token. Let's OK that. Let's apply that. I also need to apply that in the application registration location as well. So let's go back to the application registration. Let's go back into the redirect URIs here and let's change that URI over here too. Let's paste that information in. Let's put HTTPS colon slash slash in front of that and click save. Now I need to go back to my application, back to the overview and restart the application. If I restart this application, it will take a few minutes to come back up. Again, if you want to see this coming back up, you can click onto the log stream and you can check out the log stream to watch this application coming back alive. Okay, our application online has now restarted. Let's see if those environment variables made everything work. So let's open up that default domain again and we have sign into my account. Let's sign into Mike Admin over here and we have welcome Mike Admin on Python test app mike.azurewebsite.net and let's call an API and we can see the same information as we had locally. So that kind of concludes deploying a Python Flask web application into Azure App Services with authentication with Enter ID. I'll hope you join me next time for more Azure tutorials. Goodbye. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.